to introduce our first speech, Marion Schmidt. She's worked in marketing communications for over 20 years, and tonight she will have her icebreaker for her pathways journey. She, her hobbies include her cat, of course, camping, <laughs> and crafting. Mm -hmm. Help me welcome Marion Schmidt. Thank you for that introduction. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. <clears throat> so, okay, hello, what's happening? There we go. It's the first time I got this thing, so I'm like checking it out. Um, how many in here own a dog? How many in here own a cat? I'm going to change that. How many in here are owned by a cat? <laughs> how many are owned by an indoor cat? Okay. Did you know that indoor cats can live up to 17 years? Yeah. Sadly, an outdoor cat can only usually only lives between two to five years. Mm -hmm. That's due to chemicals, uh, disease, of course being hit by a car, and being attacked by other animals. So while indoor cats live longer, I, I asked myself, what is the quality of life for a cat that would be left home alone for days or a week at a time? This, these were the questions I asked myself because I knew we were going to adopt a cat. I wondered, what could I do to make travel and camping enjoyable for a cat? Because <laughs> that would mean it would be enjoyable for me too. <laughs> Um, the trailer that we have is 15 feet by 8 feet. That's a really small area for two, two adults and a cat to stay nestled in for three or four days or a week. That's too much to be cooped up in. So being the research nerd that I am, I searched online. I asked people who also, who I found uh, that very few people that had cats with them when they were camping. And I finally found a website called the Adventure Cats. So, you need to work now. <laughs> there we go. So this is Bella Notte, which is Italian for beautiful night. It's our cat. This is, this is where she's like four months old. And my partner, Brian, we've been together over 20 years. And our vintage trailer, it's a 1961 Bolzero. That's the trailer that we would be camping in. So the title of my speech is How to Build an Adventure Cat. There is a website online called Adventure Cats, and I love their tagline, Living Nine Lives to the Fullest. <laughs> it's, it is really cool. So this is, this is just a really short description. Adventure cats are a fast-growing worldwide community of felines who accompany their owners on outdoor excursions. Uh, it's more than that. Uh, photos of activities are posted on the internet. A lot of people are putting their cats in danger doing these outdoor stunts oh. just for the sake of these photos. And I'm just going to use that as a disclaimer because I would not ever do that to my cat. So these are some of the photos. People from all over the world post photos of their cats um, that go camping or in, and outdoors with them. So there's six elements to build an adventure cat. Personality, identification, um, they need to be spayed and neutered or neutered, vaccinations and treatment, and a harness leash and a clicker. So personality, calm and confident, inquisitive, social, and easily handled. This is a nice, uh, kind of like a base to jump from. My cat will not let you handle her, so. <laughs> Although she is an adventure cat, this isn't necessarily, she doesn't follow in this line. So you have to know what kind of cat you have. Is it a hiking cat? A rock climbing oh, cat? A camping cat? Or a water sports cat. And I want you to notice this cat is soaking wet with um, swimming fins on. 
There are cats who love to be in the water. Mine's mm -hmm. not one of them. <laughs> so with vaccination identification, everything that you do for your cat, you have to prepare it before you take it outside. So you have to make sure that it's treated for fleas and ticks because they will be getting fleas and ticks. Um, and all of the vaccinations that an outdoor cat would have. Indoor cats, if you keep your cat indoors all the time, you don't have to do any vaccinations. But outdoor, if you're gonna have it outdoors, it has to have everything an outdoor cat would have. And microchipped, very important. If your cat gets loose, you may never find your cat again. <laughs> so um, when they first told me they were gonna mic microchip my cat, I, I, I don't know, I was picturing something really big and painful, but it's really only the size of a grain of rice and it goes through a syringe needle right underneath their skin and between their shoulder blades. So it's not as bad as it sounds. <coughs> Here's what it looks like. And it's not a GPS. <laughs> it's actually software that we pay for every year. And if you let that go, then your uh, microchip is useless. Because what they do is they scan it and that software um, is, is on like vets and uh, shelters, they, they have access to it. So it's really important to have your cat spayed before you go take them outside. You don't want them chasing after cats. You don't want them to be jumped by cats. <laughs> um, the, the two most important, uh, I don't want to say tools, but equipment for taking a cat outside is the harness and a leash. Because cats are kind of double jointed, if you just did a collar, they would slip right out of it. Mm -hmm and you never want to use a leash on one of those collars on a yeah. cat. These are four candidates for harness training. <laughs> what happens is the cat, they have a nerve back here in their neck that when mother cats pick them up, mm -hmm. they automatically go limp. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what's going on here. Mm -hmm. First of all, they're being dragged. Cats don't like to be dragged. And because they're being dragged, they're, they're feeling that spot back there being The leash is the second most important uh, piece of equipment. When you get a leash on a cat, it's different than a dog. You keep it really loose to make the cat think that they have freedom. You follow the cat around. You don't tell it where to go. It tells you where to go. So that's when I say think like a cat. You have to just follow them around, whatever they want to do. Meanwhile, you're looking to make sure they're safe that's your job. A safe length is about six feet. We keep our cat on a retractable 25 foot length leash because she is a rock climber. And it's really important to keep uh, building up your cat's confidence and get that bond of trust because when they go for a walk, you wanna make sure that they're comfortable and feel safe. My cat stays right next to me like a dog. She walks around with her head up and her tail up, just as proud as can be. So this is what happens when you have a cat on a 25-foot leash. <laughs> this is at the top of a three-story tree. Most of the time when cats climb up a tree, it's not a big deal because their claws are rounded. What happens is, though, when they try and get down, they can't because they, can't, they have no traction. So here we are at a campground. And she decides to just jump up the tree before we knew what was going on. And we sat there and thought, well, what do we do now? Do we have to call the fire department? <laughs> Calm as can be. This is the, the adventure cat personality. She's at the top. She laid down, let her tail hang a little bit, looked around. Then she got up, and one branch by the next, she came back down like it was nothing. Like, what are you worried about? Dogs can come when they're called. Cats, take a message and send it back to you later. <laughs> That's our cat. And unfortunately, a lot of times when I take her out for a walk, people are walking by with dogs, and I, I get a little nervous, and I she won't come. So I've got to kind of do this business, which she doesn't like. So her next I've got her harness trained, leash trained, car trained. This is the next one, the clicker. 
All you have to do is feed the cat a treat and at the same time click. And eventually she's going to come. We'll see. This is Bella riding in the car. So when you want to train your cat to go around in a car, you take them around the block a couple times a week. Or you take them to Krispy Kreme. Like <laughs> my man does. He takes it to Krispy Kreme every Saturday. <laughs> and this is Bella at Big Sur. She climbed up a six-foot embankment before we even knew it was happening. She's a rock climber. This is at Idlewild. This is Brian is encouraging her and petting her and keeping her calm. This is her halfway up. This is ten feet. And this is Bella, twenty feet up. Oh wow. Well, yep. That's what she loves to do. So I'd like to say that build confidence, nurture trust, reinforce the bond and give space to grow. Look at that catitude. <laughs> <laughs> When, you're, when your cat has confidence, it, she could be a 13 pound cat, but this is what she feels like she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the zen of an adventure cat. <laughs> All you have to do is give them the space to explore. Be brave, take risks, and allow the unexpected. Uh, unexpected. Thank you, Toastmasters.